Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Cease and desist or face the courts, the warning to operators of Dovecot. Over $33 million spent in failed Commonwealth Secretary General bid. And later in sports, five-time world champion sets another record. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. Concerns this afternoon from some St. Catherine residents about the location of Dovecot 2, a new burial site in the parish. It's being reported that at least 15 burials have so far taken place there, which has angered residents in neighboring communities. The original burial site in St. Catherine ran out of space for the dead. More in this report. The process has been ongoing. It started in 2013, but the minds of the people haven't changed. They're flatly rejecting the expansion of the burial ground in their community. Margaret, who was among a group of protesters this morning, is adamant that the Dovecot 2 site should not be at its present location. I think it is unfair that Dovecot is allowed to come on our veranda because when Dovecot put their site there, it is actually where we can get up in the morning and see these graves. So I'm not in support with the Dovecot site. Moreover, we have our children, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren will be here to use the water that this site will contaminate it. So I'm saying no to this. Another resident told us that over 15 wells are located in the designated space, which is a major concern. It's not a case of if it's when the water will be contaminated. When we spoke with NEPA at that meeting, the mitigation purposes um, that were put in by the environmental scientist, Dr. Chambers, who did the environmental impact assessment for Commander Park stated that test wells should be dug and be tested. NEPA has no mechanism in place to neither test these wells or to monitor the testing of the wells. And our question is and continues to be, how can you give permission for something like this when you don't even have the mechanism in place? Efforts to get a comment from the National Environment and Planning Agency NEPA this morning proved futile. In the meantime, Chairman of the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation, Norman Scott, says no permit was granted to the operators of Dovecot to have any burials taking place at the new site. He says action will be taken. Under the, under the Local Planning Authorities Act, which is what we use, we have issued a cease and, and desist order, meaning no further burials must be um, taking place, but we are going to be also invoking the Health Act on them. So we are going to be calling on the Health Department to do what is necessary to prevent any further burial. Mr. Scott says the cease and desist order was served on the operators two weeks ago. If that is not obeyed, we'll have to take it to the courts. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. Five houses in central Kingston were firebombed early this morning. Three of the five were damaged on James Street and Smith Lane. Residents say they lost everything. Who was among? I was inside and the little old man that lived up the top bawled out and said, fire. And when I look up there, I see the whole place in blaze. Down here, so never catch yet. And amid the fire. Residents had to run for cover as gunshots rang out. The things up on the road, uh, one next to one, I, I don't know what to do. So I just, I, I, I just go and I, the bathroom, I lock the door. I hear me, I lock the door. I mean, I'm going to tell I go on, I'm not going to come out. Those same gunshots are what prevented the people who live on James Street and on Smith Lane from retrieving many of their things because they were so afraid to go back in them house to go and get their belongings. And we'll have more on this story in subsequent newscasts. It has been disclosed that Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith's failed campaign for the Commonwealth Secretary General post cost the government $18.2 million, Sandy Williams reports. 
A media release from the Office of the Prime Minister, OPM, said the sum accounts for lobbying expenses related to air and ground transportation, COVID-19 tests, meals and accommodation, and communications support activities for staging of events such as the launch and engagements with delegations. It also included its support, printing of documents, photography, food and beverages. An additional sum of over $25 million was spent for the Jamaican delegation to attend the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Rwanda in June where the vote took place. The OPM says the cost to attend the conference was split among three ministries with the Office of the Prime Minister shouldering $12.8 million, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade paying $7.7 million and Ministry of Tourism contributing the remaining $5.1 million. Mrs. Johnson-Smith was defeated by the incumbent Baroness Patricia Scotland at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. And the Arjan Guinea Communications Group will this afternoon release the results of a poll on how Jamaicans viewed the money spent on the campaign for Kamina Johnson-Smith for the position of Commonwealth Secretary General. The poll findings will be released during primetime news at 7. Now, field work was conducted between July 16 and 26. It involved interviews among 1,113 people in a nationally representative sample of persons ages 18 years and over. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us. Much more stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. The police high command say the man who was arrested in Autry St. Anne on the weekend was the mastermind behind the illegal importation of 21 guns into the island in March this year. The suspect, who's whose identity is being withheld pending formal charges being laid, was arrested by personnel from the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation CTOC branch at a party. The police say the man has been on their radar for some time and his arrests follows months of investigations that featured several lines of inquiry. 18 handguns, three rifles, and a large cache of ammunition were seized by the police at a warehouse in Kingston on March 4. The find was made when personnel from Jamaica Customs noticed anomalies with a package and called in CTOC. At least one academic is calling for urgent action to prevent future environmental breaches. It follows a chemical spill in the Rio Cobra recently, which resulted in a major fish kill affecting the livelihood of several residents in St. Catherine. Since then, there have been calls for the government to take action. But sociologist and development scientist Peter Espute believes it will be business as usual. You know, what is pop, um, polluting the Rio Cobra is not just bauxite companies, you know. Sewage treatment plants along the banks of that river discharge their lightly treated effluent into the same Rio Cobra. Mr. Espute says they are more players that are contributing to water pollution in other parts of the country. So a company can breach the effluent discharge standards and get away with it because there's no law saying them up. If, if you breach the, the discharge standard, you're going to be fined X, Y, or Z. This is intentionally done because the government doesn't want to harass the business community. And it's now time for the latest in the economy. Here is Cody and Barrett with the Business Minute. In business news, rum and other spirit sales in Jamaica for brands held by the Campari Group grew by one-third over six months to June compared to a year ago. That the sales in Jamaica grew to 9.2 billion Jamaican dollars from about 7.1 billion dollars in the comparative 2021 period. Sales in Jamaica account for 5% of group revenue, which were estimated at 1.26 billion euros for the global distributor producer and distributor of spirits. In business internationally, another wave of airline cancellations and delays is taking its toll on passengers across the United States on Monday. According to FlightAware, there have been 200 flights cancelled so far on Monday. 
On Sunday, 950 flights were cancelled. A total of 760 flights have been delayed across the United States Monday after nearly 8,000 were delayed on Sunday. On Sunday, Chicago saw the most cancellations and delays with approximately 12% of flights cancelled and over 45% of flights delayed. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. Time now for the top regional and international stories with Sandy Williams. In regional news, the Antigua and Barbuda government is defending the decision by police a year ago to use tear gas to disperse demonstrators protesting the mandatory vaccination program, even as the main opposition United Progressive Party, UPP, reaffirmed its condemnation in the strongest terms. A year ago, the police used tear gas to break up the demonstration by people who were protesting against a decision made by the government to move towards the vaccination of frontline workers in an effort to curb the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. In a statement today marking the first anniversary of the protest, the UPP said it wanted to reaffirm its commitment to respecting the freedom of choice of all Antiguan and Barbudan citizens and residents. On the international scene, Experts say China's military exercises show Beijing doesn't need to invade Taiwan to control it. Rather, it can strangle the self-ruled island, cutting it off from the outside world. The People's Liberation Army drills, which officially began last Thursday, focused on six zones that essentially encircled Taiwan, restricting access to civilian ships and aircraft in the area as forces conducted live fire drills and missile launches. A professor at the People's Liberation Army National Defense University said the six areas were chosen to show how China could cut off Taiwan's ports, attack its most important military installations, and sever access for foreign forces that may come to Taiwan's aid. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. And that brings us to the end of our midday news package. I'm Shane Masters. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of our news and sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.